What is going on, guys? My name is The Rose, and with me again is co-founder of Black Soccer Cipher. And today is Friday, January 12th, 2018, and we are bringing to you guys some Dragon Ball Fighter Z news and beta news and the Nintendo Direct that happened. So, we got quite a bit to talk about today. First off, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description down below, as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel for more updates, more podcast episodes, more gameplay videos, and all that other good stuff. Follow Erin Fitzgerald on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. I didn't mention her Twitch. She does uh, stream quite a bit nowadays. Everything is in the description box down below. So feel free to check all that out. We appreciate it very much. And without further ado, Cypher, you had an Amazon story. Why don't you uh, tell us about that? Start off with, uh, I guess I'm the one who gets to tear into a company first today. So basically what happened was I, quick, I order most of the games that I buy on Amazon. Not because I dislike EB, not, or GameStop. We, here it's EB Games, but I always call it GameStop for convenience sake. Right. Uh, regardless. So, more often than not, I'll order things on Amazon because it's more convenient than walking to the mall. Uh, and frankly, usually the prices are much better, so I'm, I'm more willing to wait. However, uh, I recently ordered the, uh, the Zelda case for Switch games and a copy of Yakuza Kiwami. And uh, so I ordered express shipping on these two items, but like, uh, it arrived late. And when I say it arrived late, I mean like Amazon is usually good about refunding your shipping when this shit happens. It's more so that they didn't tell me in advance. I didn't know until I'd already received the package. Really? Well, like I knew that it was a, I knew that it was late, but basically I got to steam and froth and be pissy about it for two days because they didn't let me know in advance that it was going to be late. On the bright side, though, I mean, like, they took, like, ten bucks off my order just because I didn't have to pay for shipping. So, did you, like, call them and complain and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, I didn't have to. Oh, okay. I was going to when I got the package today, and then I, I got this email from them that was like, yeah, we recognize that your item is late, we're gonna refund you the shipping, and then I got, I just got the receipt, like, just before we hit record. Really? Yeah. Well... Speaking of shipping problems, uh, last week on episode one, part one, I ripped into GameStop for completely botching my order. I had ordered the buy two, get one promotion they were doing on free games to end the year of 2017. And I ordered Bulletstorm, the definitive edition. I ordered Ukulele, and I ordered a JRPG called Exist Archive for PS4. And the only game I had received was Exist Archive last Friday at the time. And the disc was not in the case. It was, like, sitting in the box. Like, inside the paper, the box. Oh, fuck, yeah. And they had sent me a blank case with no box art or no nothing uh, with it, which kind of sucks. So I called GameStop. I'm like, what the hell, guys? I'm like, I ordered three games. I only get one. And the one game you guys sent me is Scratch the Hell, because it wasn't even in the case. Which may not be GameStop's fault, because they no, probably could have had it. Not. It probably was in the case, and it probably got banged around in shipping, and it probably popped out. You know, so I can't entirely blame GameStop for that, but I don't know. But I called them up, and they said they were going to replace uh, the two games that were missing and the... One game that came damaged. And I know it's a used game, so it probably had scratches on it already. But probably not to the extent that, that it does now. You know, these motherfuckers on Monday sent me only the two games that I did not receive and never replaced the third game. So have you mentioned it to them, or no? I didn't bother because they probably didn't have the game, maybe. I don't know. That's possible. But it's fucked, man. I just, I'm just i going to clean up this disc and hope to God it works. Because there are fingerprints on it, which will come off. So hopefully the scratches aren't that bad to the point where I won't be able to play the game. But it's just annoying, man. You know, they tell you they're going to replace, you know, the damaged game, and they don't. But at least I got the two yeah. games I was missing. 
and I got every and I got the the replacement for free. I mean, I paid for them. I should have gotten them regardless. Mm. So that's my uh, GameStop story. You know, they kind of pissed me off, but I really don't know if there's really anything I could have done about it. So with that being said, let's get into the Dragon Ball news. Oh boy, I want to get into this first just because the the uh, you know the beta is going to be the meat and potatoes. I mean, not the beta, the uh, Nintendo Direct. Yeah. Oh, let's let's stop that. No, 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 stop. Steam video playing. So we got the system requirements of the PC version of Dragon Ball Fighter Z when it comes out. Uh, what your system will need to be at to be able to properly play this game. And you're going to have the minimum requirements is a Windows, obviously Windows PC 7, 8, or Windows 10, 64-bit OS required, uh, AMD, F, uh, AMD FX 4250, uh, 4.2 gigahertz. Oh, my God. My my uh, hard my uh, processor only uh, maxes out at four point two. Jesus. Uh, slash Intel uh, Intel Core i five, thirty four seventy three point twenty uh, gigahertz, four gigs of memory RAM, graphics card Radeon HD sixty eight seventy one gigabyte, uh, or GeForce GTX six fifty Ti at one gigabyte, DirectX eleven. Uh, obviously, you need an internet connection, and uh, sound card, DirectX compatibility, sound card, or onboard chipset. Now, that was the minimum settings. This is the recommended settings. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Again, Windows 7, 8, 10, 64-bit required. AMD Ryzen 5, 1400, 3.2 GHz, or an Intel... I seven three seventy uh thirty seven seventy at three point four gigahertz, eight gigs of RAM, graphics, um Radeon H D seventy eight seventy with two gigabytes of I guessing um for the GPU. Uh or a GeForce GTX six fifty with two gigabytes. DirectX eleven, internet connection obviously, and the sound card DirectX compatibility sound card or onboard chipset. Those are some pretty high requirements, even for the minimum requirements. Yeah, that's really weird, eh? So, I'd be I'd be curious to look at it compared to like uh, the latest update for Guilty Gear XR, because right. they seem to be running on very similar engines. Where XR is kind of two point five D as well. Right. But I think some of the effects might have something to do with that. Like I'm not. Sure. So, what do you think of uh, what do you think of these requirements? It sounds pretty freaking well, beefy. It sounds pretty beefy, but I'm not a PC gamer, so I don't really have a benchmark to go off of. Right. Now there is one other piece of news. This one, we, we um, this one is specifically for the beta. We have news on what the beta. What the beta itself is going to uh, have for us. And the beta is going to have all of the playable characters from the closed beta that happened in September. So there, which are those 11 characters, which was Super Saiyan Goku, Frieza, Perfect Cell, Android 18, Majin Buu, Super Saiyan Vegeta, uh, Teen Gohan, Super Saiyan Trunks. Uh, I'm forgetting a few characters, I'm sure. Uh, I haven't looked at the roster. There are, all, uh, there are also other characters that are going to be in there. Now, my brother texted it to my phone, and I currently don't have access to that at the moment. Um, there are going to be, I think, at least, from what I've seen, like 18 playable characters. Uh, let me just look this up, actually, real quick. Yeah, I just I was just looking at the full roster not even two minutes ago. See. Yeah, it's uh, Super Saiyan Goku, Super Saiyan Vegeta. Uh, looks like Ultimate Gohan, Frieza, 
Kid Boo, Perfect Cell, Piccolo, Krillin, Nappa, Android 18, and Beerus are going to be the beta characters. Okay. Uh, playable stages include Planet Namek, World Tournament Arena, West City, Volcano Wasteland, Cell Games Arena, uh, Rocky Field Evening, Available Game Modes, World Match, Battle Tutorial, we'll have the rankings available, Replay Channel, Stamps, Limited Set, uh, lobby avatar customization and two dramatic scenes. Now the two the two dramatic scenes are probably going to be what what the story mode is basically like. Okay. So I'm thinking that's what that is. So that's pretty neat uh, that we might get we probably get a taste of the story mode. Uh, now the two dramatic scenes they pick that's not known at the moment. I see. Uh, I also have some beta news of my own that I came across recently, and it's, um... So, as I discussed in my... I think it was my top five most anticipated. Um, so I'm buying Final Fantasy Dissidia NT. And apparently the beta for that goes from this weekend until the 21st. So I'm I'm rather excited to actually see what's in it. Because I, I have kept myself in the dark in this game for so long that the only things that I know about it are that the new characters include ones from uh, Final Fantasy Tactics... Final Fantasy Type Zero and uh, Final Fantasy Fifteen. Really? That's literally like I've seen some differences in gameplay. That's really it. Interesting. I didn't even know that beta was this weekend. Yeah, neither did I. I just I looked it up the other day when uh, when you mentioned the fighters beta, the fighters beta. Right. That and the Mon Hun World beta is apparently next weekend. Well, that's good. At least those two don't overlap. Yeah, thank God. So, before I continue, uh, something I should have said uh, last week. Uh, we talked about the five best and worst games and most anticipated games. I was going to put some uh, gameplay of each game that we mentioned um, in the video. But then I figured not to because I knew some of it was going to get copyright claimed by like Sega or Nintendo you know, here and there, so I figured including only some of the games, and and not all of them would have looked, you know, weird, and probably like shit, to be honest. So I just decided to not including any video game footage from any of the games we mentioned last week, so if you're expecting footage of the games we talked about, uh, that would be why we didn't include it. It's more or less for copyright reasons, I'm not looking to get copyright strike, you know? Yeah. So the main the main bit here you watched the Nintendo Direct earlier today and last week we had mentioned that it was probably all fake. Yeah. And, and then yesterday um Nintendo decides to go full ham and start hardcore trolling everybody. And then they never fully announce it and then it happens. Now, granted, it wasn't a full direct, like I expected something longer, but mm -hmm. what we got was pretty decent. I think what we got was pretty good. Now, I'm going to complain about it a little bit, but at the same time, I do like a lot of what we saw. Mm -hmm. What I want to complain about is how a lot of the games that they showed that are going to be on the Switch... They're remasters? A lot of them are remasters or... You know, ports of old games, like the like the Nintendo DS game. What was it called? The World Ends with uh, You. Twelly. The world ends. The world ends with you. Right. That game was released. What did they say? Two thousand five. Uh, it was one of the first DS games released, I believe. Yeah. So you're talking about a game that's thirteen years old. We're going to be thirteen years old by the time it comes out again on the Switch. And I would think. However, I. Th oh, uh, go ahead. Go in ahead. Nintendo's defense. In Nintendo's defense, I'm going to say that having played the original, they be they need to overhaul it from the ground up so that it will work on the Switch. Now, the what I think is, since the game is so old, I would think anybody who wanted to play it has already played it. Especially okay. since you can emulate Nintendo DS games. 
So I'm thinking anybody who's already played it already got to play it. Now what I do like here is that they're adding more content to the game itself, to the Switch port. Which will make it feel like a new game again, essentially. I, I was going to say that firstly, yeah, I think the additional content is definitely makes it worthwhile. Especially for a series like this that is like... I've only known one or two people who have even talked about The World Ends With You. And so, I, in my experience, it's something that's very niche. Well, it is a um, JRPG, so... Well, yeah. But the thing is, is that this extra content and the fact they're going to have to rework the gameplay to fit the Switch, which which does not have dual screens. Right. Uh, coupled with, like, you're saying the people who have already purchased it... Or emulated or, or it. People who wanted to play it have already played it. I disagree with that mentality. And the reason I say that is because, firstly, it has it has stuff that's going to make people want to buy it. Like, additional content usually makes people buy stuff even if they already own it. Um, secondly is Atlas. Atlas is new to, like, uh, fuck, have, did Atlas have a hand in 12E? I don't think they did. No, it's it's Square Enix. Um, what I was going to say, Atlas does this all the time. And, uh, although the game is not made by Atlas... Although the game is not made by Atlas, uh, they, there's a lot of history where, like, Atlas will release, say, Devil Survivor on the DS, and th and then they re-released it for 3DS not long after, and people still bought it. Fair enough. I mean, I know for I know for a fact that I've bought games that I've already bought, you know, previously. So yeah, I'm just also, thinking. Um, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Twee, uh, The World Ends With You came out in uh, 2007. 2007, okay. I thought it was 2005. But, you know, I was just thinking that a game that old, you know, people probably played it already, so... Mm -hmm. You know, I would think maybe the new content is probably what's going to sell the game. But yeah. if, if they were just pushing, like, a new port 11 years later, then it probably wouldn't sell as well, except for mm -hmm. maybe to people that wanted to, you know, have an upgraded port of it. But speaking of upgraded ports, we got Hyrule Warriors coming to the Switch. And it's the complete amalgamation of, I believe, the DS and the Wii U versions? Yes, and it has all the DLC in the game. From the start, no bullshit. None of that, you know, nonsense. <laughs> now, I still have my Wii U version, and I never completed it. Like, I, I did the story mode, but I never completed the adventure mode. So, okay. now that this new version's coming out, see now, I'm going to kind of contradict myself in what I just said about the last game, because I am going to buy this one when it comes out. Not only for the portability, because I never played the 3DS version, and I heard the 3DS version wasn't all that good because of the way yeah. it ran on the hardware. I am going to get this one because it has everything, because I never bought the DLC, because I never played the 3DS version, which had, you know, the extra maps and the extra characters built into the game. Mm -hmm. So this is going to feel sort of new to me, because there's content I never played. Um, now, again, of course, this game's been out for, like, what, four years now? And, you know, people who've wanted to play it, I'm sure, have already played it, you know, like myself. But, in, again, like what you said, the new content, or in this case, the content that people didn't play, like myself, and for the portability are going to be the reasons that this game sells. And I can yeah. tell you firsthand I am going to buy that one. Honestly, I've never experienced Hyrule Warriors, and I would really like to. Oh, it is a fantastic game. I'm not a Zelda fan, and I love that game. Mm. Also, we have uh, a Switch port of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. And this game adds a fifth Kong, which is Funky Kong. Funky Kong is the Rad Surfer Kong. And he has, it looks like a really interesting moveset, where he can uh, glide in the air with his surfboard, kind of like how Dixie Kong can with her twin tails, or with her ponytail. Um, he 
can walk on he can walk on spikes thanks to his surfboard without getting damaged. He can do an infinite roll, which reminds me of Sonic Spin Dash for some reason. And he could also do an infinite twirl in the water. So it's like he could be constantly attacking in the water. And all of these moves, they're saying, are basically attributed to his uh, his surfboard. And he could also double jump. Okay. Now, again, I played the Wii U version. I thought it was a fantastic game. But I'm going to buy this one. Purely for the portability. Because if I ever want to play it again, I will not be confined to my television. You know, I'll be able to play it in the car. I'll be able to play it at a, at a restaurant. Or if I'm sitting at a doctor's office for an appointment. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Do you think that, uh, that Funky Kong is kind of like the game's easy mode based on what you just said? I have a feeling that he, he will make the game easier. Because his move set seems like it's it's gonna make things easier. Um, okay. Because like I said, he's got the double jump, so he'll be able to jump further and traverse bigger gaps. You know, he won't be, he won't get damaged by spikes, and he can pretty much infinitely attack as long as you have you know forward more uh, forward momentum. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, he can glide in the air. So not only can he double jump, but then he can glide in the air, which makes his jump even further. So, yeah, I think he's going to kind of break the game. Yeah. To be honest. So there's one more port that I'm very excited about. Which one is that? Dark Souls. Dark Souls, you're right. See, I never played yeah. Dark Souls, so I just kind of ignored it. <laughs> uh, the only reason I'm excited for this remaster, it's not because of the Switch, and it's not because of the portability. It's because, uh, well, my roommate actually sent this to me today before I watched uh, before I watched the Direct, because we're both very big fans of this series. So I was like, this has to be fake. And I saw it in the Direct, and I was like, well, if it's coming to Switch, it's going to be coming to PS4. And if it comes to PS4, then I'm just going to buy it for that. Right. Um, yeah, it's one It's one of those games where it's like, I don't own a PS3 anymore, but I feel like it has enough replay value that it's worthwhile. So is this like some kind of a definitive edition? Like, is this going to have all the DLC for that as well in it? I'm assume I'm assuming that it will. So, here's a game I think you probably gushed over. Was oh, the SNK SNK Heroines? When I first I when I first saw that, I'm like, I'm sure I'm sure Cipher loves this game already. Okay, listen, I I love SNK. I I love a good cat fight. Um, and I keep in mind that when I referred to Fate Extella to my roommate, I would always just call it Waifu Wars. Waifu Wars. That's exactly what I was thinking with this game. Yeah. I don't know why they don't call it that. SNK Heroines Waifu Wars. <laughs> but, um, see, I've been, I've been thinking about it because I don't know how I feel. It looks really good visually, but it also incorporates things like items and, uh, the, the dream finish mechanic that I... I don't know how that's going to pan out because I feel like if that's a requirement for every match to end, it's going to get really old really fast. I hope it's not because they showed... I don't think it will be. Because they did show that after you deplete your opponent's health bar, like, the match doesn't end. Yeah, I hope that's an option that you can toggle on and off. Now, do you think this will be an eShop title given, you know, the, the graphics and whatnot and... And uh, how it doesn't look like it's going to be a really, really big game, like a mainstream fighter. Or do you think this will get its own, you know, little physical release? I think what's going to happen is we're going to probably see it on the eShop, uh, first and foremost. Because it doesn't necessarily seem like, as you said, like it's big enough to merit a physical release. But if we do get one, it's probably going to be a limited printing. And if we do get one, do you... I can't see this game going for like fifty bucks. Oh fuck no! I would say pro- you'd, probably the same price as Ultra Street Fighter Two. That was what forty. Uh, in Canada, it's forty. Uh, so the U.S. it might have been thirty. Might have been yeah. See, even I think that might be too much for a game like this. Honestly, I think if it's an eShop title, I think it should not be any more than fifteen twenty bucks. U.S. speaking. I think it really depends on the scope of the game, though. Like, we don't really have all the details yet. Right. I mean, there's obviously going to be online mode, and 
We don't know if there's going to be a story mode to the game, which most fighters, I'm sure there probably will be something like that. Yeah. And I'm sure it's going to have the arcade mode and the local versus and training and, you know, all that stuff. Plus, you can customize the, each character. I'm interested in this game purely because it's a fighting game and because I never really played SNK games back in the day. Honestly, man, I would recommend um, you have a PS4 as well. Yeah, naturally. The, okay, go. It's a PS2 classic. It's called Fatal Fury Battle Archives 2. It contains, uh, I think it's Real Boat Fatal Fury, Real Boat Special, and then Real Boat 2. And that's how I got introduced to SNK originally. So I, I think you should. I think you'd really enjoy them. I mean, the only SNK game I've ever played was Fatal Fury Two because that was on the on the SNES back in the day. Man, Fatal, Fury, Fatal Fury One, Two, and Three are so slow. Yeah, I only played Fatal Fury Two. I never and and I did dabble a little bit in what was it, King of Fighters Twelve? That was on the PS3. Yes, Eleven and Twelve were both on the PS3. Yeah, I played. I believe was. I, I I played either Twelve or Thirteen. It was one of those two. Okay. And I didn't play 14 yet. I'll get to that eventually. But uh... Uh, it's a funny story about that, actually. So I was in my local GameStop the other day. Uh, actually, it was just last night, and they had two Steelbook copies of uh, of KOF 14. Really? The only reason I didn't buy them was, uh, well, I had the money. But they were... Okay, usually that stuff here goes for like 80 90 bucks. So it was really weirded out at the fact they were like 40 40 and $35. Because I was like, what the fuck is wrong with these? These are this cheap. Right. So I'm thinking if I go there next time, I'm going to ask the assistant manager, like, hey, why is this so cheap? Like, what is wrong with it that it necessitates that it is this cheap? Maybe they're used copies? Well, they are. But I don't think they'd slash the price in half. Especially not if it's a steelbook. Like, I get KOF 14 is a little bit older. I don't know. It just seemed weird to me. So, you forget this is Canadian GameStop we're dealing with. <laughs> so generally speaking about the re-releases of Hyrule Warriors and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, mm -hmm. I am actually really happy that these are coming to the Switch because I still have the Wii U ports of both games. Mm -hmm. And technically speaking, I don't have all the money I need to pay off my collector's edition of DB Fighter Z. So now okay. I can actually trade those two games in with, you know, uh, a couple of the games I plan to trade in as well to help pay it off. Because I'm obviously going to buy the Switch ports of these games anyway. You know, so why have both? Yeah. And like I told you last week, I only played eight Wii U games, and now four of them got, port, uh, got Switch ports. So it seems to me like there's really no reason to even have a Wii U anymore. No, and I'm kind of glad for that, honestly. Now, the only reason I'm going to keep my Wii U is because right now, uh, Super Mario Maker has yet to get a Switch port, and I really think it will at some point. Mm -hmm. Nintendo would honestly be stupid not to port uh, Super Mario Maker to the Switch. If it doesn't get a physical release, it's probably going to get a, an eShop release. Right. I mean, because Mario Maker was like the, one of the top-selling Switch game, uh, Wii U games, you know, next to Smash. So I think it would be silly for Nintendo not to port it over when they're porting yeah. over all these other, you know, Wii U titles to the Switch. So that and Super Mario 3D World was a fantastic 3D platformer. That game. Some people say it's better than Odyssey. No, absolutely not. But it was a great game. I love that game mm -hmm. to death. So to be honest, um, I think. At some point, we're going to get Switch ports of Mario Maker and possibly Smash at some point. Maybe announced, yeah. Maybe at least one of them will be announced at E3. We'll just have to wait and see another five months from now. I really hope they put Wind Waker HD on the eShop. Speaking of a Switch port of a Wii U game, Pokémon Tournament's getting two waves of DLC. See, I was surprised. Did they have DLC for the uh, the original release? Yes, it did. Not a lot, yeah. but it did. It did have at least, I believe... Okay. I think it had at least one wave. I see. Yeah, I was kind of surprised because um, with Pokemon Tournament DX, 
I thought that it was much older than it actually was. No, it came out a week before my birthday. It's only a few months old. Yeah, it's only September. But, um, well, the the Wii U version dropped, like, forever ago, right? Yeah, it dropped uh, February or... It was either February or March 2016. Okay, yeah, so it is older. So I was kind of surprised that they, they were announcing a bunch of DLC and stuff for it now. But I guess it makes sense, considering it coincides with the re-release. The re and the first one, the first wave will be available on the 31st of this month. And the second one won't be available, I think, until the spring. I'd have to double-check, but I believe that's the case, yeah. Yeah. Because it, it had the second release date, and I think it said April 23rd. Now the, yeah, that sounds about right. The first wave has uh, Aegis Slash... Which will have uh, two fighting forms. And it'll also have the support Pokemon Mega Rayquaza and Mimikyu. That will be the available battle pack um, that's going to be out in a couple of weeks. In three weeks. And the second one has Blastoise as the playable fighter. And the support Pokemon for Mew that and will Celebi, be... right? Yeah, it will be Mew and Celebi. Now, I'm not too crazy about the support Pokemon, because honestly, when I played the Wii U version, I never used the support Pokemon all that often. I always mained Suicune, or Mewtwo, or Shadow Mewtwo, uh -huh. and, and I thought they were badass characters on their own to the point where I really didn't need the support Pokemon all that much. Super edgy. He's a lone wolf, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So, he plays by his own rules. I just haven't gotten the new release for the Switch yet because I feel like the game doesn't have that much content to the point where it would warrant me to buy it again. I just really don't like Tekken, and I know that it's kind of based on the Tekken engine. Like it's not one to one or anything, but oh, believe I'm me, not gonna get it. if you don't if you don't like Tekken, you're not going to like this because it's even more three D. Like the 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 fighting switches from three D to two D. A lot. Uh, it's. But I think that's a really neat mechanic because at least I'm getting a 2D fighter out of it in some degree. Yeah, but I mean, it depends because it will switch back and forth quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I may I may look into it, but I highly doubt I'm going to buy it. I mean, if you know somebody that has it, definitely give it a try. I don't. I'm the only person that I know who has a Switch. Oh, okay. Well, dude, I'll, I'm a university student. Everybody else is poor. <laughs> so... Like I said, I don't think the game has enough material in it for me to, to buy it again. Because the Wii U version was really short. The story mode wasn't all that interesting to begin with. And, and then Heihachi Lucario brought them all together for the po King of Iron Pokemon tournament. Yeah, right? Which ironically bans steel types. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the online mode you know, is either story mode or online. That was really all there is to that game. And the story mode to the game is really short. And it's really not that difficult. So, that's what really stopped me from buying this game again. I don't think the DLC is going to be mm -hmm. enough for me to want to uh, replay this game. Because I'm not going to buy the game again just to play the DLC characters, but have to buy that too. Yeah. I just don't see, you know, myself doing that at all. Apparently there's some Pokemon from the, uh, the Wii U release that didn't make it into the like they they sorry some Pokemon from the arcade release that didn't make it into the arcade into the Wii U but made it into the Switch. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Kind of like how uh, they added new stuff between uh, you know the Mario Kart Eight Deluxe that was not in the original Mario Kart Eight. They like threw in a couple more characters and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I could see you know they I could see they did that. Oh, dude, some of these choices are actually really good. Uh, Caesar, Empoleon, Darkrai, Krogunk. Uh, they were the DLC from the Wii U. Were they? Yes. Fuck. But, uh, yeah, some of these have a little A next to them, so I'm, I'm assuming that that's, like, DLC. Yeah. Yeah, it says post, you know, it says post-release addition to arcade version. Anything marked with a C is DLC, and the only ones that are currently marked that are Age of Slash and Blastoise. Because I know there was a DLC from the Wii U version, and it had the Pokemon you just mentioned. Because oh, I remember huh. seeing it. It's fucking weird. But, 
we have the new Kirby game. We got to see more of that. Kirby Star Allies uh, comes yeah, out. Yeah, I saw. I thought some of the new copy abilities were nice. Yeah, the spider uh, web thing looked was really cool. cool. Yeah, the ice lance that looked awesome. Yeah. Now, what do you think of the new friend abilities? Like how you can make a copy friend and then you can throw them as an attack. Uh, they did something very similar, and I think it was Kirby Superstar Ultra. See, I didn't play that one on the on the 3DS. I think they did. I can't really remember. I was really young when it came out. Um, but basically, what would happen is you could have a second player play as um, like the your your buddy or the your, AI, the NPC. Yeah. So it functioned basically as as Tails and Sonic too. Right. The only thing is, I don't think you could throw them. Or anything of that nature. And now you could also make new friend uh, friend copies out of mixed abilities. That's pretty cool. Now, while the mix ability thing was in Kirby 64, how you were able to mix up the different copy abilities if you swallowed two of them at a time. Yeah, they did that in a lot of the later Kirby games too, like uh, Squeak Squad and I believe the re-release of Superstar let you do that as well. Now... Some of the new ones, like the Ice Lance, was like uh, you know a mix of the water and ice ability, which I thought was really cool. Uh, I liked the Spider ability; I thought that was awesome. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Was the Paint ability ever in any of the other Kirby games? Because I'm pretty sure it was. I think it was called. Uh, yeah, it's Paint Roller. Or no, it's yeah. Paint was in Superstar. It's apparently one of the rarest copy abilities, but this one is called Artist. So I'm assuming they just brought it back. And they changed it up, because it looked a lot different from how I remembered it. Um, apparently, paint is a one-use ability. <laughs> That's, so, uh, so it's, it's going to be about a, s- a screen nuke. So it's like one of those uh, one of those things from that Kirby adventure where you're able to find one of those whistles and like blow up everything on the screen? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. But uh, I believe that game got a March 16th release date. So, I'm excited. Just, uh, just a little over two months from now. Man, there are just so many games coming out in a short amount of time that my wallet just can't keep up. Yeah, same here. I do plan on getting the Street Fighter V Arcade Edition, which you know releases next Tuesday. And uh, I am knee-deep in Fighter Z. And then there's, oh, a, there's a game in February that I want that comes out. I think it's oh, Dynasty Warriors 9, February 23rd. And oh, then, that's next shit. And then March 16th is Kirby. And then there's a couple other games in the spring <laughs> that are coming out. I've got uh, an Amazon wish list just full of stuff that I want. Hyrule Warriors, the definitive edition, I believe they said is going to be a, sp- a spring release. Oh, I think they said May 4th. That's, mm, I don't remember. I think, yeah, I think it was May 4th. One of them was May 4th. So there's two other announcements here. One of them is... a. Uh... They've got a, there's going to be a free update for Mario Odyssey that features Balloon World, which is basically some kind of battle mode. Right. Uh, how do you feel about that? To be honest, I kind of don't care. No, me neither. I mean, I'm kind of I'm not done with Mario Odyssey, but I don't really give a shit. I mean, it's a neat little thing, and you want to play like just to kill time. Yeah. And I could see, you know, some people. I, I could see some Let's players are going to get some use out of this. Because, I think it's a really interesting tool for like speed runs, like for learning speed running tactics. Yeah, because people can hide. You know, you can hide a balloon anywhere you want, and if you're playing like uh, hide mode, you can you have thirty seconds to hide a balloon anywhere in, on the map, in mm-hmm. any kingdom you want, and in seek mode, you are the one having to find a balloon hidden anywhere in any kingdom that you pick in thirty seconds. Now, 30 seconds isn't a lot of time, and you can't travel very no. far in 30 seconds. So, I don't know how they're going to make it work. Maybe they're going to have, like, timer icon things you can collect to extend your time. But they didn't show that. But at least yeah. Luigi makes a cameo now. <laughs> yeah, thank God, eh? After yeah. being relegated to a suit of fucking clothes. Yeah, right? At least uh, Luigi makes a cameo now, that's all I can say. Technically, a lot of characters make cameos now because you can put out different character balloons. Like, they showed a a Mario one, they showed a Yoshi one, and of course, you know, Yoshi's already in the game, but yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be, um, like, Luigi balloons, Waluigi balloons and stuff. I'm sure you could pick different character balloons. 
I hope when you get the Waluigi balloon, it goes wah. Yeah, right? <laughs> it has to make the noise. Speaking of updates, what did you think of the Donkey Kong uh, addition to Mario and Rabbids? Uh, I've never played it, so I don't really have an opinion. I never played it either, but um, it's just more to play. And because I already want to yeah. play that game at some point, it's just more to play. Donkey Kong's in the game now, and Donkey Kong's getting like his own little story mode to the game as well. It's going to be set like a separate story mode to the you know the main game. So I thought that was pretty cool. Basically, um, they also said that's a DLC, and they said I believe that's available in the spring as well. And that pretty much leaves only uh, Mario, Mario Tennis, Mario Tennis, the the new one. Mario, what is it called? Mario Tennis Aces. Uh, so one thing I'm kind of excited for is that the game actually has a story mode. Right. And I, know, and I know that seems very weird, but I I really enjoyed the Mario Tennis on the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance. But both of which kind of... I, I feel like I'm not sure whether I love them or hate them, because what they do is they lock all of the, the actual Mario-related content behind the story mode, such that you have to do a bunch of shit before you can even, even unlock it. Right. But obviously, like, you have Mario and all of the cast available from the start for versus mode. It's just you don't encounter them in the story. Whereas this seems to be more involved. And it's like, I really liked the more down-to-earth setting in those. Even though it wasn't typical for Mario. So I don't... I'm curious to see how they'll pull off the, the nail that it's just straight up, just this is Mario. Well, see, I thought, um... I thought, like, what they showed off with the story mode was really interesting. Because, like, uh, they showed uh, you having to battle piranha plants and they would spit fireballs at you that yeah, you'd have really to neat. knock back at them. Then they showed a, uh, a boss fight with uh, PD Piranha where he would spit something at you and you had to, like, knock it back at him to damage him. So I like yeah. I like what they're doing with the game. Now, I'm not a tennis fan at all. but See, uh, I like tennis. But uh, I'm certainly... You know, interested a little bit in, you know, how they're doing things. I'm just uh, quietly scrolling through the direct real quick to make sure we didn't miss anything. No, I think that was everything, dude. Um, I took notes through it, so. Now, um, if anyone's interested um, in the Dragon Quest Builders demo, if you want to try that game, the demo for that is available today. As well as the Kirby Battle Royale demo for the 3DS for that game. That is also available today. Um, just, you know, a little, couple little things to throw out there. Oh, by the way, we didn't mention this. Um, what did you think of the Breath of the Wild costumes in Hyrule Warriors? Uh, I wasn't really paying attention, to be honest. I just kind of uh, skimmed through the, through the announcements. Like, personally, I think that... It doesn't really matter to me. I'm going to buy Hyrule Warriors anyway. I think it's a really nice addition. Right. Um, and I also feel like if they were to add a completely separate character for it, not only would it be a waste of time and effort, it would also necessitate a difficulty spike <laughs> where Link gets more powerful the more KOs you get <laughs> to, to represent the fact that Breath of the Wild is fucking impossible when you start and then it just tapers off really early. Oh, I, f I did find something we actually missed in the announcements. <laughs> um, Ease 8 from uh, Nis America coming to oh, yeah, Nintendo Switch. I wonder if they're going to... I wonder if their localization is going to be better this time. To be honest, I... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, what I was going to say is um, the game looks good. Like I like hack and slash games, and it's kind of the reason why I'm like drawn to this game every time I look at it. Mm -hmm. It's available this summer. Right now, there's no release date except for a summer window. And maybe the Switch port will be better. Will be better, but yeah. you know, right now, I kind of want to play the PS4 port just for the hell of it. Give me a minute. I just saw an announcement from October of last year about how they were going to redo the localization. I just want to see if this is related to the. To the switch, like it's 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 older, so I'm curious as to whether they announced it earlier. 
Oh, and they showed uh, Payday 2 again for the Switch. We know it's coming. We knew that already since before the Switch mm-hmm. even launched. Uh, it finally has a release date, though, February 27th, for anybody who cares. Personally, I never cared for Payday 2 on the PS4. I don't play shooters. I don't care. Yeah, I didn't really care about that announcement. Uh, then we have... We actually have a couple of smaller games. We have Faye. The the game Faye, February 16th, uh, which is mm-hmm. like an indie release. And, uh, I didn't That's pay so... much attention to that because I really didn't care all that much. <laughs> no, me neither. So yeah, regarding the localization, it looks like we are going to be getting the patched version. That's good. So at which least, is good. At least it's something. And yeah. uh, Dark Souls Remastered, I wasn't completely paying attention. Did that get a release date or no? Uh, I don't believe so. I'm going to look, though. Because at the end of the Direct, it didn't show one. I don't... Yeah. Uh, let's see. Everything we know about Dark Souls Remastered. Polygon. Let me see here. All they gave... It says May 25th. May 25th. It's going to so they... feature all the DLCs in, and uh, improved resolution. Okay, so... Uh... Yeah. Do you think that's just like a, a a time they hope to get it out? You think it'll get delayed at least once? Probably. Oh wait, here um, it is. Uh, you mentioned you hope it's coming to PS4. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm looking at Polygon right now. Yeah, I actually found it on Games uh, Gamespot. Um, there's an article that we're going to go over for tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's okay. part two, and it's actually at the bottom, <laughs> and I just noticed it just now. It's going to be uh, coming out for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Sweet. So everybody will get to play the remastered edition. Uh, Yeah, so the only difference that I'm seeing right now is that uh, between the Switch and the other versions, aside from portability and like the, the resolution drop that that's going to entail, is that... On the Switch, it runs on 30 FPS, and on the P- on every other system, it runs up at 60. Right. Yeah. Which, I've never really paid much attention to frame rate, so I don't really care. Now, I brought up... Nice- well, I was bringing up Nice America. Uh, I came across an article that I might as well just shoehorn into this part one. Okay. Uh, it's about what uh, they said about the uh, the performance of the Sky of Five. On the Switch, okay. which was actually uh, a bit surprising. I need to find it. I found it on Facebook. Let me see if I can just find it again real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so apparently Nice America has a hand in the uh, SNK Heroines because they're advertising okay. it on their page. Hmm. So that's interesting. Da, 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 da. Yeah, they advertised it twice in one day. How about that? <laughs> now, it was about a report of uh, how well uh, the Sky of Five on the Switch had sold. It sold about 200,000 copies on the Switch, which is pretty good. And they announced that they want to be... They want to make the, the Switch a... Um, a permanent platform going forward. Okay. Along with the, uh, you know, obviously continued support on the PS4. Now, what do you think of um, them, like, ignoring Xbox completely? I really couldn't care less. <laughs> I think that, you know, like, for, for me personally, it was it's, it's a case of, perhaps favoritism because I grew up with PlayStation consoles and I grew up with Nintendo consoles and I didn't really get a proper Xbox and I've always found that they're very lacking in games. Um, like, the original Xbox didn't really have anything that interested me and then the 360 was kind of like, oh, it's the same thing as the PS3 and then the Xbox, uh, the Xbox One, when they did all that, just all those terrible marketing decisions I was kind of, like, surprised that it sold as much as it did, even after they reverted stuff. Yeah, see, I only play mine for, uh, 
I only play mine for exclusive games like Forza and Games yeah. of War. Other than that, I'm always I'm always leaning towards PlayStation or Nintendo. I also find PlayStation has better better support just in general for like online play. Um, their shop is a lot better. There's a better selection on it. Right. Stuff like that. The only thing that I think the Xbox One has over the PS3 is backwards compatibility. Or sorry, over the PS4 is backwards compatibility. I'm trying to find that freaking Nisa article. I had it saved and I must have lost it. But I basically went over the gist of what it said. I mean, personally, I'm kind of excited, but at the same time, if they start developing for the Switch, that means that I'm going to actually have to start buying their fucking DLC. <laughs> and, like, okay, when Disgaea 3 came out of the PS3, there was there there was easily over $100 of DLC for it. There, Yeah, there was a lot it, of DLC. It was a lot. Um, I don't know what it was for 4. And I'd be curious as to what it is for 5. Because what I tend to do is I'll either not buy any DLC or I'll just buy the updated version with all of it. Personally, I'm still interested in what they're going to do for uh, for their press conference next month. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Given that it was, it's given that it was mostly like Disgaea characters. I'm assuming that we're going to get like Disgaea six. Yeah. Or some remasters. Definitely what I'm thinking too. Let me just search. Let me search one more thing. If I can't find it, we can't find it. But I know, like speaking of Nisa, I'd rather see them. Honestly, I would rather see them remaster uh, Soul Nomad, which I thought was just really fucking good, or like Makai Kingdom, then give us another Disgaea. Just because I feel like Nisa is already a very niche company, and those games are very good. Right. I mean, I basically went over the news of, like, what it said, but I was just trying to, like, find it anyway. Yeah. Don't exactly remember where it was. But, yeah, they basically said, you know, just to reiterate again, they basically said that, uh, they're gonna, they're gonna focus on the Switch because the, uh, the Sky F5 had sold pretty well on the Switch. Mm -hmm. Selling over 200,000 copies, which... For a game that first released in 2015, that's pretty fucking good. To release again on the Switch, two and a half, you know, almost three years later, yeah, that is pretty good. I think including the DLC really has something to do with that, though. Yeah, exactly. Like I know for me personally, it was just kind of like, it for me it was an impulse buy. I didn't really give a shit. I was just like, oh, I haven't bought a Sky Five yet. Oh, it's on the, it's on the Switch with all the DLC. I might as well buy it. Right. See, and if I if that was my mentality, I probably would have done the same thing. Yeah. Like, the, the fact the DLC included was a plus, but it wasn't the be-all, end-all of me buying it. Let's see. Maybe I can find it on This America's website. This is the last place I'm going to look. News. I just saw it, like, might, four days ago. They might send out a printy bomb about it later. I believe that's how I found it was a printy bomb. But oh, now, shit. Okay, let me look through my emails. Yeah, that's what I was doing before, but I couldn't find it. No. Shit. Yeah, it's not in my junk email either, so. Oh, well, no big deal. I pretty much went over the gist of what it said, you know, without actually having it to go over. So, uh, I think that covers it for today. To yeah. To be honest. Uh, final thoughts on the Nintendo Direct? Uh, did you expect something we didn't get? Did you expect it to be Honestly, longer than what it was? I was expecting new firmware. That's what I was expecting, you know? I was really hoping we'd get new firmware. But, you know, they do these directs, what, like every three months? They do it like once a season? I think so, so yeah. We'll probably get one in the, in the spring, maybe in April or May. And do you I'll... think we might get another mini one, like another short one, as a result of this one being 15 minutes? It's possible, but I really don't know. I mean, like no, I said, they really didn't announce this one, so it's kind of like they just threw it out there with nobody really knowing. 
yeah. after Nintendo like trolled the hell out of everybody. That's fucking hilarious, though. So, and um, I know I said starting with episode two part one, I'd be on camera, but I didn't get the camera I ordered yet in the mail. So, hopefully, it comes tomorrow. If not, you know, I'll be on camera as soon as I get it. With that being said, I believe this will wrap up episode two, part number one of the Game Corner podcast. Again, check the description box down below. Follow Black Sakura. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Follow voice actress Erin Fitzgerald. Um, tomorrow, I want to talk about the Overwatch League a bit because it had started up in uh, L.A. a couple days ago. And uh, Erin was there live, so I'm reaching out to her to get like a statement of you know what her experience was being there and you know what she thinks uh, Overwatch League can become in the future. You know how successful does she think it'll be? Mm -hmm. And you know pretty much you know how she enjoyed it. So I may have a, a cameo appearance by her, if not in okay, cool. if not in person. Uh, basically. Uh, I'll just, I'll, like, read off her words. If she even answers me at all. I mean, mm -hmm. definitely reaching out to her about that. But I think the Overwatch League thing, while I'm not a fan of Overwatch, is kind of interesting because it is a big deal for a lot of people. Yeah. So I'm going to be looking into that. Hopefully she answers me. Uh, if she doesn't, it's no big deal. But uh, that wraps up, wraps up episode two, part number one of the Game Corner pod podcast. Jeez. Part two will be Friday. Uh, possible part three on either Sunday or Monday, so uh, be prepared for that. Again, as always, for Cypher, my name is The Rose. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch your ass down the road.